Okay, I got a question from a from a Puerto Riqueño now. Okay, so here we go. This is, now here's here's a quick here's a quick answer for anybody who doesn't have time to watch my videos. It's not a big you know whatever ethnic group you are, whatever religion you are, nobody cares. Okay, other people have come to Japan unless you are one, truly one of a kind in the world. The Japanese have never seen before, like you're an albino, one-legged lesbian. Uh, I don't know what else, Hasidic Jew, I don't know, <laughs> there's just, Japan has seen them all, every kind of foreigner that, that have ever existed has been to Japan, from every country in the world, probably, I can't, you know, I don't have any statistical facts or evidence to back that up, but I'm pretty sure that's true, so whatever you are, don't worry about it, now, this guy says he's Puerto Rican, and he has a uh, master, what's it? Well, my education is from Puerto Rico, university BS and master's degree, um, not relative to engineer, just in health. Want to go go to Japan? Okay, so he wants to go to Japan, and and he's been in South Korea and he likes it a lot. And he says he. To be short, my question is this: My education is for, for, from Puerto Rico. What bothers me and may be invaluable to them is a U.S. country. Maybe they don't know about because I have been blessed that I can speak both fluently English and Spanish. Okay, he lives in Pennsylvania. Here's the thing about this: your email, dude. What's your name? What's your name here? Kevin. Kevin. Okay. That's a white name. <laughs> um, your email is riddled with mistakes. I would not hire you based off this email. Okay. You, you spelled cheaper wrong. You don't have a D on standard. You make quite a few gram grammatical mistakes. You don't capitalize Korea, but you capitalize Japan. Um, you know, some of these sentences I, I don't. I have to read twice to figure out what you're trying to say. The word invaluable, I think, I think you, you misused it. I th invaluable means it's very valuable. What bothers me, and it may, and it may be invaluable to them, my education, my education is from Puerto Rico, is what bothers me, and it may be invaluable to them. Is a U.S. country, country, maybe they don't know about it. I have been blessed both that I can speak fluently English and Spanish. You, you capitalize S Spanish, but not English. And this is a super run-on sentence. Like, you don't have a period in here at all. It's just commas. Um, yeah, and then you say you you have no teaching experience except teaching swimming. That's Don't even mention that. Don't waste my time with information I don't need. God, get to the goddamn point. Uh, yeah, let me see. Oh, my God. And he wants to know... I think, is this the guy who said he wanted to... Yeah, okay. You want to work in a university. Oh, my God. Okay, you're... You know, I make these I make these videos, and I told you guys who, who send me your questions. I'm going to ridicule you if your question's really stupid. This is a really stupid question, but it's probably because you're you're naive, okay, and you don't know how to spell cheap. Come on, C H E E P, cheap. He hopes to work in a university. Kevin, Kevin, you're not going to work in a university. Doesn't matter. Well, well, okay, you got a master's. Okay, you got a master. Oh no, I actually I didn't realize you had a master's. Okay, actually, I take that back. It's possible. But, uh, I'm betting your resume is riddled with mistakes, too, because this, this email was riddled with mistakes. You've got to respect the English language, dude. You can't just write someone an email full of, like, tons of mistakes like that and expect <laughs> to be taken seriously, okay? Uh, maybe it's just the email. Maybe your resume is great, but... The chances of, first of all, but the chances of you working at university are very, very slim. Then you say, well, I'd like to start off at an elementary school or a high school. It's not that easy either. That is not easy. You don't just get a job like that. Your best bet is JALT. JALT is probably the best, best way to go. Go for JALT. Anyone who's coming to Japan who wants to work here, JALT is a great way to go. Some people don't like JALT. JALT sets you up. They take care of you. The pay is really good for very little intellectual effort okay some of you complain oh but it's no creativity and i have no control over the class and i'm just like a parrot yeah but you also don't have very little stress and you have lots for the first year you don't have to do anything just sit back and look around and do you put in your time and, on, and when you're not working you can look around and see what else is out there it's a great way to introduce yourself to the country with very little stress and it's secure you have one year to do whatever you want the hours are pretty good so JALT, if I, had, if I had it to do over, I would try to... I didn't even know about JALT back in the day, man. I just came over. Take it off the blood here. 
So um, go with JALT, you know. But trying to get a job at an elementary school, or actually, if you go with JALT, you'll probably end up at an elementary school or a high school, which is different. But it's a JALT position or ALT position, which is different. Um, assistant language teacher. Actually, I'm not sure. Yeah, and JALT, I think JALT offers like people from all different kinds of countries, and I don't know if they're actually teaching English. Because some of them are from countries where English is not the native language, so I don't know what they have them do in Japan. But there, there, there are many different positions you can get. Anyway, if you can get, if, if they offer JALT in your country, then go with JALT if you can. The other options, if you don't have JALT, is getting a job at one of the major, the huge English schools, the McDonald's, you know, the Eons, the, the ECCs, which are not great jobs, but they're not terrible jobs either. They usually make you work. Oh, I don't even know nowadays, but when I when I started out, I think the the contract was something like 20 to 25 hours a week teaching. I think it's up to 30 or 35 now, teaching hours, which is quite a bit. Uh, very little vacation time. I know there's a school called uh, what's it called Peppy Kids or something. I think you have to put in six months first before you even get a paid vacation, something like that. So a lot of them are a lot stricter. But that's the that's probably what you're going to be offered. Or those are your chan you know, your those are your chances. Those are your, your the easiest ways to get in. Those are the e those are the jobs available to you. God, I'm something like I can't communicate either. Yeah, those will be the jobs available to you when you first come over if you don't get a jolt thing, okay? You can't just go into go to a high school or an elementary school or a college and get a job. Now, the other thing to remember is when you're coming over is to make connections as soon as possible. Find people in those good positions. You know, tell them you're looking. You, know, you never know who's looking. Uh, I got lucky. Well, I, I didn't get lucky. I've been here 23 years. So, yeah, eventually, you know, people just know me. I'm reliable. I've been here a long time. Um, I'm not going to do something crazy. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm, re I'm reliable. So I made lots of connections. So I get some pretty decent jobs now. And that you know that's it. But you know if you don't if you come over here and you're a fresh guy and you don't know anybody, it's going to be a lot harder for you. So keep that in mind. Now, the fact that you're Puerto Rican is nothing that honestly I would not. I would not bring it up. I would say you're Amer you got an American passport. I'm pretty sure all our Puerto Ricans have an American passport, right? So you're an American. Just tell people you're an American. And you live in Pennsylvania. I would not bring up bring up your Puerto Rican past. Um, I had a teacher actually who worked from who actually. I know two very two two important people in my life were Puerto Rican. One of them was the guy who worked for me from Puerto Rico. And when he started working for me, my father made a joke. He said, "Puerto Rico, but they don't speak Spanish." <laughs> because uh, from a Peruvian point of, point of view, <laughs> Puerto Ricans don't speak Spanish. But I saw the, the funniest joke in the world watching Modern Family the other day. Uh, <laughs> what's her name? The wife, you know, the wife, the Colombian wife. She's, she, her father, her husband is getting on her back about something. She's like, what kind of animals do you think we are? We're not, we're Colombian, we're not Peruvians. <laughs> Which I thought was so funny. I just died laughing. Anyway, um, yeah, don't brag about being Puerto Rican. Unless the job is for Spanish, if you're going to get a Spanish job. But at the same time, there are a lot of qualified Spanish teachers here. And teaching any language, whether it be English or Spanish, is difficult if you don't know, if you've never done it before. And if you've really got to teach it. Like, Spanish is a little bit harder. It's really noisy. The helicopter up there. There's a helicopter over my head. It's really noisy, huh? Dude, I'm making a video. Little, uh, uh, Japanese are usually very polite. Probably a Gaijin helicopter pilot there. Spanish, when you're teaching Spanish in Japan, the pronunciation will be easier for them, but the grammar will be harder because they have no basis for it at all. They haven't learned any of it. But we have quite a few Spanish students at our school. We teach Spanish, and they're pretty good. And no, we're not looking for a Spanish teacher. So we have, we have a good Spanish teacher now. All right. Uh, yeah, so don't brag about being a Puerto Rican. If you find a school that happens to be looking for someone who can do both, you'll be very lucky, but most people do not need a Spanish teacher. There are plenty of people here who speak Spanish and teach Spanish who are looking for those jobs already. I think it's even more competitive because there's so many, there are so few of those jobs available right now. Um, that's about it. I'll, that's all I can really say. Again, don't, hang, don't get hung up on whatever you are. 
you're Puerto Rican, big deal. A lot of Puerto Ricans have come to Japan and done a, done a good job. Work on your goddamn spelling, all right? It's an insult to get an email like that if you love the English language. And no, no, it's an insult to get a, a question, an email like that, and then pretend that you're going to work at a university. Though, to be fair, you could probably get away with it. I know a guy from England and a guy from Scotland that both faked their university and master's degrees. Faked them. I mean, they completely. They just made these. They got these fake diplomas. They bought these fake diplomas, and they uh, they teach at university level, right? and that's uh, that's a crime. That's fraud. And they got away with it, and no one seems to care, which is, which actually has to do more with the Japanese. It's 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 the fault of the Japanese for letting them, for not checking, you know. All you, all you do is contact the universities and find out those people actually graduated from there, but they don't check. You could probably do something like that. I wouldn't recommend it. I think it's wrong, but you know, what am I going to do? I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a, a rat, right? I'm not going to call the cops or anything on them. So that's the other option, you know. I don't know. They're taking jobs away from people who actually put in all that time to get their masters. So now you got your masters, so yeah, there's. So well, actually, I shouldn't even be saying that to you because you have a master's, so that's possible. But uh, you have to probably put in some time. I, I, I remember once a long time ago, I went up for a professor job, and they all, they were just about to give it to me. And then they said, "Oh, but you've never taught at a university before." So that at the last time they backed off. So you don't always need it, but they will want you to have either experience or or something. So it's not that easy. That's what I'm saying. My, those positions are even more competitive. Everybody wants those. They're really cushy in general. But again, they're not that great. Um, I know someone who works at the university now. He gets paid, I think, three hundred and fifty thousand a month, which is about three thousand five hundred. He gets two months off a year. Paid vacation. He gets one thousand dollars a year, spending money. He can buy anything he wants, right? And that's it. And he gets all that for free, right? Chattamate. So my my niece is calling me in, so I'm gonna go. But that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, again, don't get hung up on your own ethnicity. You're not that special. You're not a snowflake. There are tons of people who've done what you've done. So you can do it too, have a little hope, but don't be cocky either, right? Make connections, that's important. And say, say I'll be back. Ready? I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay, thanks for watching. Give me a break, man. I said give me a break, man.